Now we're going to switch to uh, ASV mode. Um, so we're going to come down here, we're going to go to ASV mode, we want to confirm that. The first thing I want to do is I want to go back to my patient and make sure, again, this is really important in ASV mode that you have the appropriate height set. Um, so right now we want a male patient uh, with 60 inches which is going to give us an ideal body weight of about uh, 50 kilograms. We want to confirm that. Um, and we're going to go to controls here. In ASV, uh, and one unique thing about ASV is we don't set a respiratory rate and we don't set a tidal volume. What we do set is something called a percent minute ventilation. Uh, when you think about minute ventilation, that's your respiratory rate times your tidal volume. It's the amount of gas that you move in and out of your lungs uh, over a minute. Um, and it's important for um, you to remember that um, the uh, minute ventilation uh, is driven by what you're going to set here with your percent minute ventilation. So we always start with 100% minute ventilation on, uh, on our patients. Uh, there's a couple of patients I'll give you scenarios that we don't. Um, based on that, it's going to calculate um, a uh, minute ventilation that's appropriate for somebody that uh, it has a 50 uh, kilogram body weight. Um, I'm going to confirm all those settings. That looks good. Our peep looks good, 21%. Make sure everything else looks good. Flow triggers are good. Okay. So let's confirm that. And now we're ventilating an ASV. Now, we're going to go back to alarms and we're going to hit auto. And it's going to automatically uh, correct our alarms. Back X out of there. And now the machine is delivering uh, ASV ventilation to the patient. It's very unique. Uh, what's unique about this screen is it does display on, on every mode of ventilation, your peak airway pressures, your expiratory minute ventilation, your exhale tidal volumes, and your uh, flow rate, uh, to, your total respiratory rate is at the bottom there. Now I will tell you, in all these modes of ventilation, even when you're in assist control, uh, don't be alarmed if you have a 500 cc tidal volume set and you're only getting 450 one minute, maybe 480 the next, because the ventilator adjusts the volumes and pressures each breath it delivers, um, and it's the same way with the ASV. So um, don't be alarmed if you see your tidal volumes vary in any of these modes. Um, as far as the patient populations that cannot tolerate ASV, you cannot use it on as status asthmaticus, and you can't use it on anybody that has a diabetic uh, ketoacidosis or any type of severe metabolic disorder. The ventilator can't keep up. On your COPD patients, you're going to need to increase this, uh, or anybody that has any type of lung disease. I increase it by 10% um, and see how that does. And how we're judging whether ASV or any mode of ventilation is working is our end titles. So if we needed to get rid of more CO2, or if our end titles were high and we wanted to get rid of more CO2, we just keep increasing this by tens until we achieved a, uh, an end title that we felt comfortable with. And again, keep in mind permissive hypercapnia and permissive hypoxia still applies to all these patients with sick lungs. Um, but that's a unique portion of ASV. I don't think there's anything else to say about that.